in this session let us discuss the very important condition very important condition like you know how to maintain continuous electromagnetic torque previously in our previous discussion we discussed like you know how to find uh, direction of induced voltage how to find direction of torque but very important thing here is for example let me think of let us think of a motor because now there is no difference between motor and generator for us okay for example in motor this is a this is b okay which is stator now let us think of my rotor is having poles of maybe n pole here s yes, pole here okay now means in motor we have to give current so let me give current maybe dot here cross here okay so cross here dot here cross here dot here flux will be in this direction flux is in this direction so flux has to come out of stator so this is going to be n pole of stator and this is going to be s pole of stator okay now this n pole will get the attraction towards this this s pole will get attraction towards this such that my torque developed will be in this direction fine and as it is a motor it will rotate in the same direction we know now as it is rotating in that direction these are going to be currents voltages are going to be dot here cross here because voltage should be against to the direction of current we discussed in our previous session so these are going to be currents and these are going to be voltages induced voltages okay now for example if in this situation i strongly hold at the rotor not to rotate then what will happen because of the torque it will have a twisting moment in this direction twisting moment in this direction so my motor developed torque will try to rotate me for example if i leave this if i leave this then what will happen this will be rotated 90 degrees okay after 90 degrees there will not be any further torque at all okay so means once it reach n pole reach s pole and s pole reach n pole after that there won't be any torque so here torque will be there only up to 90 degrees after 90 degrees like you know continuation of torque will not be there now in order to have continuous electromagnetic torque because torque in the sense few people may think that it should be in motor and all no in both motor and generator torque should be there now in generator back torque will come that back torque should be continuous like you know means if torque is not continuous then what will happen mechanical power will not be absorbed means that electrical power cannot be supplied okay so continuously torque should be there in the sense if generator is trying to rotate in this direction opposition should be there opposition should be there continuously opposition should be there continuously such that mechanical power will be absorbed so we have to maintain continuous electromagnetic torque for example in motor also in motor also once it rotate here torque will be stopped but in order to maintain continuous rotation what are the conditions we have to meet okay that is the very important uh, criteria to analyze now for example in order to maintain continuous electromagnetic torque there are two conditions first condition is means for example this is uh, producing two poles n pole of the stator s pole of the stator okay now rotor for example rotor is producing four poles always we have to think about the heteropolar machine only homopolar like you know economically homopolar machine cannot be designed because of that like you know we don't have any homopolar machine in the world in the usage okay but why homopolar machine like you know homopolar machine uh, practically we don't have because lack of back to back connection some analysis is there that analysis we will see in the detailed machine analysis but here machine simplified our target is gate 2020 okay so heteropolar means if it is n pole this will become s pole again n pole again s pole few people think that n pole n pole s pole s pole if it is n pole n pole s pole s pole okay so n pole s pole n pole n pole combinedly is going to be one pole only no equivalently yes s pole s pole combinedly is going to be one pole only okay anyway forget about all heteropolar structure we have to use n s n s okay now if you see the torque developed n pole n pole will repel so torque in this torque will be in this direction s pole and n pole will get attracted so torque will be in this direction and s pole s pole will get the repulsion so torque will be in this direction and n pole s pole will get the attraction torque will be in this direction okay such that this torque and this torque will be uh, compensated this torque and this torque will be compensated such that net electromagnetic torque developed is going to be zero 
okay now means what is the condition here if stator is having two poles if rotor is having other than two poles like four poles or eight poles continuous electromagnetic torque is not possible okay that is the condition number one means condition number one say that number of poles of stator and number of poles of rotor should be same otherwise continuous electromagnetic torque cannot be produced now what is the second condition in order to have continuous electromagnetic torque okay in second condition let me ask you like you know i used to ask in uh, classes also what is the purpose of commutator in dc machine okay purpose of commutator in dc machine like you know many like uh, below standard substandard books say that commutator is meant for ac to dc conversion or dc to ac conversion ac to dc conversion in generator and dc to ac conversion in motor we will see in detail in uh, dc machines okay but here commutator purpose is not for ac to dc dc to ac of course that is one of the purpose but the main purpose is to maintain continuous electromagnetic torque okay what what is that let us see for example in dc machine okay poles will be always in stator only poles will be always in stator only because means my armature should have commutator commutator is a mechanical rectifier which operates because of rotation so armature should be in the rotor only for example this is the armature okay about what is armature what is field and all gradually you will come to know okay now for example this is n pole this is s pole let us think of it's a motor okay in motor you are going to have conductors all around okay in this motor in the sense we have to supply currents let us supply currents of dot 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 in the upper section cross 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 in the lower section okay such that my currents will be my currents are entering into this board and out of this so my field produced because of rotor is going to be n pole of rotor s pole of rotor okay now n s will get the attraction yes n will get the attraction so torque developed will be in this direction okay now let me tightly hold the rotor not to rotate then what will happen because of my torque developed like you know it will try to rotate me in this direction in clockwise direction for example if i leave this if i leave this then what will happen once n pole reaches s pole and s pole reaches n pole there will be no further torque okay now what is the purpose of commutator see means commutator will be there here these are the brushes okay now for example you are sitting here you are sitting on this conductor which type of current is flowing dot okay now if i leave this if i leave this they start rotating so this conductor will occupy this portion this portion this portion this portion this portion this portion after that if this conductor uh, what they say place if the conductor is placed here means that that particular current direction should be changed from dot to cross okay for example i strongly rotate the uh, stop the rotor not to rotate at the given position now if i leave it if i leave it my rotor start rotating in this direction omega okay so once it start rotating this conductor current of cross okay this conductor will occupy this position after some rotation okay so once the conductor uh, from here if it rotate and if it if it is placed here conductor current should be reversed from dot to cross or cross to dot okay such that even though rotor is rotating continuously all upper portion should be dots only all lower portion should be crosses only then what will happen everywhere n pole will be here only everywhere s pole will be here only do rotor rotate means that my commutator functionality is such that such that always like you know n pole of the rotor should be placed here means that my armature mmf rotor mmf my armature mmf or mmf of rotor should be here okay and where is my field mmf n to s my field mmf is this field mmf is this continuously okay so what is the main purpose of commutator my commutator is maintaining armature mmf stationary in space displaced by 90 degrees with respect to field mmf 
okay so without commutator 90 degrees rotation is possible but because of commutator when this conductor is placed here cross will be there because of rotation if this conductor is rotated and placed here that conductor current will be reversed from cross to dot dot to cross such that all upper section conductors always have dots all lower section means conductors always have crosses so what is the functionality of commutator it is not like you know ac dc dc ac it's a like you know second level answer what is the primary level primary level is going to be my armature is maintaining armature mmf stationary in space even though rotor rotates even though rotor rotates armature mmf is being placed stationary displaced by non-zero displacement angle 90 degrees with respect to the field mmf so what is a uh, like you know main condition main condition to be attained in order to have continuous electromagnetic torque is means my armature mmf should be stationary in space okay my armature mmf should be stationary in space with respect to field mmf displaced by because if these two align if these two align this north pole is aligned with south pole and south pole is aligned with north pole there will not be any torque so my uh, my stator mmf and rotor mmf should be stationary in space for all the machines this is the, uh, these conditions are going to be valid okay so it is not like dc machine ac machine induction motor generator nothing like that for all the machine this condition has to be met okay so what is this condition my rotor mmf and the stator mmf should be stationary in space with respect to each other displaced by non zero displacement angle okay in further course of action we are going to prove that in dc machine in dc machine this angle is called as delta or torque angle what is torque angle and all we will uh, see later in dc torque angle delta is going to be 90 degrees okay in uh, synchronous machine in synchronous machine my torque angle should be less than 90 degrees 0 to 90 degrees and in induction machine this delta is more than 90 degrees in the sense 90 degrees to 180 degrees it will be in induction uh, machine and here it will be okay less than 90 means that it will be 0 degrees to 90 degrees we are going to prove gradually so all machines are same for us let us unify all machines to a single point very simple if delta is 90 dc machine if delta is less than 90 synchronous machine if delta is more than 90 induction machine okay so let me conclude only two points first point is number of poles of stator and rotor should be same in order to have continuous electromagnetic torque and second condition is stator mmf and rotor mmf should be stationary in space displaced by non-zero space displacement angle in order to have continuous electromagnetic torque